It seems like the world and his granny are getting on bikes these days and that's an absolutely fantastic thing. Due to obvious reasons, people who perhaps have never even considered cycling before are now using it for transport and as a way to improve their fitness. For many of these new riders, it could be the first time they've ridden a bike in years and naturally might be a bit rusty. Probably the single main issue people have when first getting on a bike is their fitness level. They have the perception that A. Cycling is going to be extremely tough and B. They aren't fit enough to be able to do it. Well I'm here today to tell you that both of these are not true. Anyone, regardless of age, shape, size, weight or political persuasion can ride a bike and improve their fitness. And furthermore, it won't be as hard as you think. So let's start off by asking the question, what exactly is fitness? Now, as far as I'm concerned, fitness is essentially two things. The ability to perform a sustained form of exercise and the ability to recover from that exercise. Notice how there's nothing in here about having to ride extraordinarily long distances at incredibly high speeds. The next question is how do you get fit? Well, from a physiological point of view, it's through something called the overload principle. In a nutshell, when we exercise, we put our bodies under strain. And when we recover from that strain, the body returns to a level slightly above where it was before we did the original exercise. Continue like this and our fitness will slowly increase. It's worth noting here that fitness is not exactly the same as strength. General fitness is more in the heart and lungs, so your ability to breathe and recover, while strength is more to do with how hard your muscles are able to work. Both are important, but I would argue that before you can work on your strength, you will need to establish a good fitness base first. Needless to say, improving your fitness will have all kinds of advantages. Not only can it help you reduce things like high blood pressure and obesity, it can also help safeguard against certain illnesses and diseases. One of the big mistakes that people trying to get fit through cycling make is trying to push themselves too hard too soon. If you're one of these people that's not really ridden a bike since they were a teenager, chances are that you may struggle to ride more than a couple of kilometres. And even then, it might feel like it's incredibly difficult. If that's you, well, the first thing I want to say is well done. You've already gone from zero cycling to, well, some kind of percentage that I can't even begin to calculate. Yeah, I'm a pictures kind of chap. The next thing I want to say is that it does get easier, as long as you stick with it. Sadly, there's no quick fix to getting fit. It's going to take time. I would say roughly 12 weeks and a bit of effort to get yourself from where you are now to where you want to be. So this seems like a good point to talk about your fitness goal. Essentially, what do you want to be able to do at the end of your 12 weeks? Now, while it's technically possible for anyone to become a super fit trained athlete, the proviso here is that you will need to be prepared to put in the considerable time and effort required to do what it takes. Realistically though, for some their fitness goal could be something more down to earth, like ride a 100km sportive event in under 4 hours, 
while for others it may simply be to ride their bike 15 kilometers or so without feeling totally exhausted. The point here is that there are no right or wrong answers. It's more about how you personally have improved rather than what you're able to actually do. Once you have worked out your fitness goal, you'll need to start thinking about how you're going to get there. I would suggest breaking your 12 weeks down into three four week periods and having some little sub goals along the way. For instance, if your ultimate goal is to be able to ride 15 kilometers or 10 miles, aim to be able to ride five kilometers after week four, 10 kilometers after week eight, and then 15 kilometers at the end of week 12. Right, now it's time to start cycling. For your first ride, simply ride your bike and see how you feel. At this early stage, you don't want to set any speed or distance targets. Just ride at a pace you feel comfortable for as long as you're able. If that's 20 kilometers or just around the block, it doesn't matter. What you're doing is setting your benchmark. Make a note of how far you rode, how long it took you and how you felt at the end. This will help you later on to see how much you've improved. If you want to be a bit technical about it, at this point I would suggest investing in a heart rate sensor as it will allow you to ride at the correct intensity required to improve your fitness. To find out what this is for you, you will first need to work out your maximum heart rate. You can do this using a very, very approximate calculation known as the Carvonen formula, which is 220 minus your age. So for instance, if you're 50, it will be 220 minus 50, which equals 170 beats per minute. Then you will need to find 65% of 170, which works out to 110 beats per minute. Riding with an average heart rate of around 110 beats per minute will mean that you will be slap bang in the middle of what's known as zone 2, which is ideal for building your general fitness and cycling endurance. The good news is that many people are surprised at how easy riding at this pace is. Alternatively, if you don't have a heart rate sensor, you can go by feel. Riding in zone 2 should feel like you're working, but not so difficult that you can't hold a conversation or breathe through your nose. From now on, it's going to be a question of repeating this ride on a regular basis for the next week. Ideally, you will need to ride your bike every other day or every two days. Remember, fitness happens during your recovery, so allow yourself time to be able to do that. By the start of week two, your fitness should have improved ever so slightly, so you will need to up your game by increasing the distance and maybe even your speed. Now, it doesn't have to be by a huge amount, possibly by 10% or so, but it just needs to start stressing your system once more so you can receive all the benefits from the overload principle all over again. And that essentially is how you'll need to continue for the next 12 weeks or so, making sure that you hit your sub goals every four weeks. Before you know it, you'll be riding much further and faster than you were on day one. If though for some reason you're unable to ride for a couple of days, try not to worry too much. Unfortunately, your fitness level will start to decrease, but getting back on the bike as soon as possible will help start building that back up again. At the end of your 12 weeks, hopefully you will have reached your fitness goal and it will be time to either start working on your strength and stamina if you want to improve further, or working on maintaining the fitness that you've just achieved.
Now my own personal fitness is on a constant roller coaster. One minute I'm up and then for one reason or another I find myself back at square one and I have to start all over again. When I find myself in that position, usually at the start of the year, this is the method I turn to and it's worked for me every single time. The key is consistency, so riding every couple of days or so and gradually increasing efforts over time. If you'd like to see how I'm doing, I will include a link to my Bicycle Diaries playlist, which outlines my efforts on a weekly basis. So good luck with your fitness. Remember, it's possible for anyone, and I mean anyone, to improve, as long as you stick with it and are consistent in your efforts. Thanks for watching.